Hello, I'm Colleen Holder and this is Let's Talk Tobago. Today we're at Papa Bee's in at Canby. This place takes its name from the owner's father. Now Ulrich Blackman's son fondly called him Papa Blackman, but in naming the inn, he shortened it simply to Papa Bee's. Within these walls are 11 self-contained apartments with the convenience of a mini-mart, a restaurant and an organic garden. A garden that the owner assures helps to make the meals here healthy and tasty. The inn is also near to the main road, giving guests easy access to Scarborough, the airport and the beach. We'll tell you more about this place right after we tell you what's happening in our stories this week. Tobago wants more than $5 billion. A look at how the island intends to spend that money and the projects that will benefit. A supply of clean, safe water even in times of disaster. And a little bit of Cuba is available in Bacalet. You're viewing Let's Talk Tobago. Welcome back to Papa Bee's Inn here in Canby. For golfing enthusiasts keen on keeping their skills up to date whilst on holiday, there are two PGA golf courses located minutes away. There are also beach and water sport facilities at the nearby Storbay and Pigeon Point beaches and the Buku Reef. But if none of this appeals to you, then you can simply spend an afternoon at Gulf City Mall, which is just walking distance from here. Now, a shopaholic will tell you there's nothing like a bad time to get some shopping done. And while there's no specific season for a stroll in the mall, this time of year is synonymous with the presentation of the Tobago House of Assembly budget. They're asking the central government for $5.68 billion to run this island's affairs over the next fiscal year. Davia Chambers tells us how the Secretary for Finance and Enterprise Development justified the amount that's needed. These are the projects and initiatives that will take Tobago forward infrastructurally, socially, economically. They'll provide a better life for people on this island through quality healthcare services, enhanced educational and sporting opportunities, increased employment, subsidized housing, just to name a few. But what makes these projects special? While they were all identified by the public in the first THA budget survey, a survey that shaped the eventual announcements reflected in the estimates for 2015 or what's commonly referred to as the THA budget. 3.13 billion of the 5.68 asked for has been earmarked for recurrent expenditures. In that proposed recurrent budget, the Assembly wants support for the Information Technology Center amounting to $20.1 million, provisions for CPEP to the tune of $54.1 million, continued support of the Airlift Committee, $330 million, among other programs. But the largest chunk will go to the Division of Health and Social Services, $846.42 million. The commencement of works for the establishment of a 50-bed skilled nursing center at the site of the former regional hospital, subject to, subject to findings on the structural integrity of the building. The expansion of the hyperbaric chamber located in the district of Roxborough with opportunity to, to generate revenue, as well as providing rehabilitative wound care services to patients. The, the introduction of inpatient hemodialysis. For developmental programs, the Assembly wants $2.55 billion for a massive improvement to the island's infrastructure, resurfacing of roads, construction of the Plymouth Arnesvale Road, to encourage enterprise development, and an ambitious program for housing and settlements. One noticeable difference in our development program estimates for fiscal 2015 is a sizable increase in the request for pre-investment studies. This year's budget estimates will reflect a provision of $25 million, an increase of $24 million from last year's total to facilitate pre-investment studies for new projects and programs. The revitalizing of the agriculture and the tourism industries is another priority in this year's budget estimates. The improvement of facilities at the Charlottesville Breeding Unit at a cost of $1.1 million, 
the establishment of a centralized composting facility at Goldsboro at a cost of $3 million, the construction of the Scarborough Market at a cost of $20.2 million, and repairs to the old Scarborough Market at a cost of $6.8 million. The theme for Budget 2014-2015 is Keeping Faith with the People's Mandate. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. Tobago was spared a direct hit from Ivan, but the heavy winds associated with the hurricane downed trees and caused the death of a woman. Damage was estimated at just under $5 billion. This experience, coupled with a direct hit from Flora, keeps the Tobago Emergency Management Agency, TEMA, on the lookout for new technology that can help this island recover quickly in times of natural disasters. The newest offer comes from a Swiss company which manufactures and distributes what it describes as a sustainable and cost-effective solution. More from Kisan Braffitt. The devastation caused by hurricanes. This usually means that the normal water supply is contaminated and unsafe for consumption, leading to efforts like this. But it's not always possible to get bottled water to those affected, which is why there's a demand for systems that purify drinking water. In the event of a disaster, one of the things that, um, is, that becomes uh, increasingly important is the issue of portable water. Um, we may find ourselves uh, in situations where our fresh water systems are very much depleted or, or contaminated based on um, things that we, we would have happened in terms of the disaster. Um, and Tobago being an island surrounded by uh, salt water, um, that may be our only resource in terms of um, uh, being able to be used to, to provide us with um, portable water to keep us and sustain us. Trun's water systems do just that. It's designed to provide clean drinking water anywhere and at any time, without using any toxic chemical treatment. Starting uh, with the pump, this is a very high efficient uh, pump, which is running on the very low energy and uh, providing the units, uh, depending on um, if it's for soft water, for uh, desalination of the brackish water. So we have a pre-filtration part and we have uh, the main filter. What's even more appealing about Trun's water systems is that it can be mounted and easily relocated. Remote villages, I see definitely we could do installations that would provide water uh, without having to do uh, pipe works and so on. Well, all we need is access to either the sea or soft water like a river or a borehole well. And that's it. The Trun's water systems remove 99.99% .99 of bacteria and viruses found in water. And as the company makes its sales pitch in Tobago, it boasts of a low operational cost and the independence of power. A plus for disaster management agencies and perhaps what Tima might be looking for as it beefs up this island's disaster response machinery. I'm Kissam Brathwaite for Let's Talk Tobago. Whether you're staying in a guest house or a villa, you rent or you own your own home, all these places have something in common, a plumbing system. For your comfort, I bet you never thought of it that way until you had a broken pipe. The plumbing should be in good working order. But life happens and when that pipe goes bust, a qualified plumber becomes a priority. That's why Tobago's tradesmen are ensuring they acquire their CVQ or Caribbean Vocational Qualification Certificate. Here's how that's helping. I consider plumbing to be the health of the nation. Very, very important. It's as important as a doctor, or even more, because not everybody requires the doctor, but everybody requires plumbing, everybody. That's the sentiment of a plumber who's been in the trade for over 40 years. And even with his years of experience, Mr. Poyer understands that to be the best on the island, one has to be certified. That's why he went through the assessment and examination process to obtain his Caribbean Vocational Qualification, CVQ, a certificate that's CARICOM approved and gives plumbers like himself and Dean Phillip the opportunity to work outside of Tobago. It's a, another level of plumbing. Um, which is um, level two, which um, really gives you the opportunity to work throughout the Caribbean. So now it gives me the opportunity to expand in the Caribbean as a plumbing contractor to do work. 
The CVQ certification also ensures that plumbers are up to date with the latest plumbing technology in relation to the region's qualifications framework, an aspect which Mr. Poyer says is good for his top-of-the-line plumbing services business. The plumbing supervisor at the Division of Infrastructure and Public Utilities, Valentine McKenzie, who also received his CVQ, says that this certificate allows locals to be a step closer to becoming sanitary constructors, another aspect of the plumbing trade that deals specifically with sewage disposal. To be qualified at a high standard, you need to go through the CVQ examination and whatsoever so that you can even obtain your license. The Water and Sewage Authority, WASA, facilitated the CVQ training program in Tobago, where 20 local plumbers received their CVQ plumbing certificates from the National Training Agency. I'm Umadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. It's time to take a break, but on the other side, we'll introduce you to the first Tobagonian to receive a PhD in Criminology and Criminal Justice. Welcome back to Let's Talk to Bagel. Today we're at Papa Bee's in Conley. Now this area is very quiet and it contributes to a relaxing stay. This place also has a heart-shaped pool with a swim-up bar. But you don't have to be a guest at the inn to enjoy the pool. It's available on a rental basis and perhaps your next location for that pool party or special occasion. But pools, sand and sea are just some of the things Tobagonians are known for. Many Christians also find respite here, away from the hustle and bustle of the Sister Isle. Some team up with religious organizations based in Tobago. These groups act as guides and provide options for those looking for an alternative to fetting and parties. But these events also contribute to the social and economic development of the island, which is why their work is being recognized and supported. The people behind two of Tobago's signature events during the Easter season in his presence for and Sunfest. They're being recognized by the Tobago House of Assembly for hosting events which not only strengthen spirituality across Tobago, but also has the potential to foster economic growth. The Assembly sees this financial assistance as an investment which contributes to the social and economic fabric of Tobago, something the organizers are happy about. For, for over 30, Two years we have been um, going and we are thankful to the Lord that the office of the Chief Secretary of the Tobago House of Assembly has acknowledged the, the role that this outreach um, have been playing over the years and have responded to strengthen our hands to do a more effective job. Vern Joseph of Dominion Promotion says he's happy that the Tobago House of Assembly bought into their mission. Our goal is, is, is to, to promote the Christian or the gospel in Tobago and to attract also people coming from Trinidad to these events to show class the talent that is, is, is available in Tobago and also to expose Tobagonians to the, the, the international level so that you know they could look at and they could... could, could um, aspire to become one of these, these, these guys. Altogether, the Sunfest Committee and the organizers of In His Presence 4 received just about $350,000. I'm Kissan Brathwaite for Let's Talk Tobago. Child abuse and neglect are issues which got a lot of media attention in both Trinidad and Tobago, especially in the last few months. It's been made clear that this will not be tolerated. But in Tobago, this island wanted to go a step further, starting with prevention. An education campaign is now underway. And as you'll hear from Omadara Mills, parents and guardians are learning how they can build and improve their relationships with their children. Social ills such as violence among youth are causing organizations to see the need to go back to what some believe is a foundation of society, the family. 
and one of the fundamentals parents learn is the negative effects of punishing a child. It's about changing perceptions, right? Changing the way people think to get results, yeah? Because, you know, punishing the child, inflicting pain, constant, constant pain on the child, eventually the child will make to feel um, very low, have a low self-esteem. The goal is to change parents' mindset from the idea of punishing to disciplining. We talked about other alternative ways of disciplining the child, right? Age-appropriate ways. For example, a four- and a five-year-old child who is probably throwing temper tantrum, telling the parents no and not doing that. Then the parent now, instead of hitting the child or beating the child, could say, well, you know, well, you know, I'm going to take away this toy from you. I'm going to actually take it away. You will not see it again. The participants at the Life Management and the Parenting Workshop are also learning about other important topics such as socialization, stress management, coping with behavioral problems, and understanding how to deal with the different developmental stages of children, all with the goal of strengthening family relations. The workshop is being done in every electoral district in Tobago by the Division of Health and Social Services. So far, over 150 parents and the guardians have participated in the program. I'm Umadara Mills for Let's Talk to Bego. And while we're on the topic of education, let's tell you how one Tobagonian has distinguished himself in the academic field. Nelson Mandela said that education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. Now with rising crime threatening the tourism sector here on this island, Wendell Wallace decided it was time to look at the issue of community involvement in policing. He describes it as a long and arduous journey, but it's a route that sets him apart from the rest on this island. Davia Chambers tells us why. Some students take a break from studying once they've completed high school. Others decide to pursue tertiary education, complete a degree, and get it over with. After those three or sometimes four years, there are those who go even further, completing a master's degree. But only a few achieve a doctoral degree or PhD and somehow manage to be the first at a university to successfully defend their paper. Well, that's Dr. Wendell Wallace from this little fishing village in the north of the island, Kastara. He's the first student from the University of the West Indies Criminology and Criminal Justice Program at the St. Augustine campus to pull this off. Actually, when I started the master's program, the aim was just to, to complete a master's. I had no intentions whatsoever of going on to a PhD. Um, one of the lecturers there, Dr. Joan Mars, um, she had a keen interest in me and in my writing. And she encouraged me to pursue the PhD. Dr. Wallace says it took four years from 2008 to complete and submit the research paper for his PhD and two years for it to be corrected. He explains what that paper is about. Um, I might have been a bit fortunate um, in that the area that I chose to study, which was community involvement in policing, not community policing, um, was very much understudied um, throughout the world. Um, so I would have received much support and, and, and much, you know, much persons who wanted to see the final product. When I looked at the level of involvement, I basically realized that we the citizens acted just very much passively as the eyes and ears of the police without any real involvement. As of such, he wants to assist in developing community involvement in policing here. The university plans to honor his accomplishments during a reception. Dr. Wendell Wallace will formally receive his PhD in September. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. We're taking another break, but do stay with us as we look for that Cuban connection that exists in Bacalet. Thanks for staying with us here at Let's Talk Tobago and we are here at Papa Bee's Inn at Canby. 
These bedrooms give you a home away from home feel because they're quite cozy. Each one of them is air conditioned with a kitchenette, cable television and high speed internet. Honeymooners stay here and you can have a view directly above the pool area while enjoying their pick of local meals from the in-house restaurant. Now, Tobagonian athletes have been holding their own. They're the National Secondary Schools track and field champions and they also played a big role in helping Trinidad and Tobago play second in the Carifta Games and 15 of them did the island proud when they participated in a table tennis competition in Cuba earlier this year. Now they're about to make their mark at another regional competition. Let's find out how many of them made the national team. 15 athletes from Tobago will travel to Mexico to represent this country at the 2014 Central American and Caribbean Junior Championships. The game is commonly referred to as the CSC Junior Championships. The Tobagonian athletes will compete in the track and field events in both the under-18 and under-20 categories. Trisha Leacock will be on the plane heading to the host city. She says she's really excited she made the team, especially when she thinks about how new she really is to the competition. It's a really good feeling knowing that I only started running last year and I worked really hard on the off-season and during the season, so it's, it's nice to accomplish that on my first year. Although she might be considered a newbie, Trisha says she's figured out one of the key components of success. Seeing that I did this over a year, I think just be just believe in yourself. Because if you don't, well, no, it's not going to happen at all. Aaron Lewis is looking forward to the Games in July to continue building his reputation in athletics. Well, I'm very excited seeing that this is my third national team made after Carifta this year and World Youth last year. So it's a, been a lead up, you know, having been doing track and field for a while. And as the team prepares for the big meet, one of the main drivers behind their success is confident that the athletes will do the island proud. Having 10 athletes on the team, the most of any club in the country, is a, is a great achievement for us. And we, as a team, Mr. Wade Franklin, Mr. Jared Franklin and myself, along with Mr. Colin Mark, we would have prepared the athletes competently enough for the Games. The meet will be held on July 4th and is expected to conclude two days later on July 6th. I'm Kissam Brathwaite for Let's Talk Tobago. Dragon boating is by no means a new sport. It actually dates back as far as 2000 years. But the growth and interest of modern day dragon boating owes a great deal to the Hong Kong Tourists Association. They headed the charge when they arranged the first Hong Kong Dragon Boat Festival International Races in 1976. Today, over 50 million people around the world participate in this sport, and this includes our little island of Tobago. The annual competition came to Pigeon Point, but in case you missed it, this is what happened. It's a team sport. It's coordinated and synchronized, with the paddlers using special techniques. The reach, catch, pull, exit. This sport also takes place in Tobago at the, you guessed it, Tobago Dragon Boat Festival. There is a very unique product, a special dragon boat racing product that Tobago can sell to the rest of the world. There is no other country that promotes extreme dragon boat racing and that is what we have here. 22 teams participated in the competition. They warmed up and then got ready for competition. Between Oceanus in lane one, Tidal Blitz in lane two, and Blue Dragons in lane three. Tobago held its own with various competing teams from around the island. But in the All Tobago Finals, Oceanus won the bragging rights with a time of 1 minute 3.7 seconds. Team Oceanus also won in the Senior Mixed B Division Final. And in the Senior Open B Division Final, a Tobago team also copped first place, the Division of Tourism and Transportation's Conquerors. Aquaholics won in the Senior Open A Division Final in 1 minute 1.9 seconds. There was also an all-female category for both juniors and seniors. Peeping Ducks won the Senior category. They finished the race in 1 minute 8.4 seconds and Bishops A for the juniors in 1 minute 8.4 seconds as well. Meanwhile, Aquaholics D took home first place in a time of 1 minute 4.5 seconds in the Senior Mixed Division A final. After an entire day of competition, teams and spectators were treated with live entertainment. 
This is the fourth annual Tobago Dragon Boat Festival. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. And while we're on the issue of culture and how it transcends borders, here's another instance of that happening in Tobago. Actually, this story has its origins in a trip taken by a delegation that visited Cuba not so long ago. Now, let's be honest. Overseas visits are usually condemned and judged as another expensive plane ride by politicians. Many don't understand how they benefit the ordinary citizens. Some argue that even when there are benefits, they take so long to trickle down, they really aren't as effective. But here's a story that rubbishes all those claims. The Cuba Disco Festival is over. But now, right here in Tobago, the Spanish rhythms, struts, and jive are being taught to young performers. Who's spearheading this drive? Dassel Cook, dancer and founder of the Zante Dance Company in Tobago. The young entrepreneur recalls her experience at a yard fest in Cuba, where she saw young children in action. She says that this sparked a particular interest. Just the way the kids in Cuba were moving, I believe my kids could do it too. <laughs> so I came back and I said, kids, I'm teaching you how to dance a little Cuba. Darcel was taught a few lessons in salsa. And because she was witnessing the dance from the place where it has strong roots, she was able to better understand what made the Cuban salsa distinct. We will do a salsa more freelance movement, but they have a special ingredient, I will call it, in their salsa movement, which is unique and amazing. These young dancers are being taught the Cuban techniques and skills of dancing. This is the type of thought and initiative that the Tobago House of Assembly encourages. Young professionals like Darcel gaining exposure at the regional and international level are now better able and equipped to incorporate new knowledge and experience into Tobago's cultural products. Additionally, through the Zante Dance Company, Darcel is reaching and changing communities. Rehearsals for the Zante Dance Company are on Saturdays 11.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. at the Bacalet Dance Studio. I'm Kisan Brathwaite for Let's Talk Tobago. And it's time to have your say, the segment of our program where we hear from you, our viewers. As we told you earlier, the Secretary for Finance and Enterprise Development, Joel Jack, outlined an ambitious fiscal plan for 2014-2015. It requires $5.68 billion in funding from the central government. Mr. Jack says the Tobago House of Assembly will use that money to provide enhanced educational and sporting opportunities to Tobagonians, support the Information Technology Center, and fund a massive development program for the island. There are also plans for tourism, the housing and agriculture sectors, and a number of studies that will inform marine development in Tobago and downstream options for the Studley Park Quarry. Now this just skims the surface of his budget. So today we're asking, how do you feel about the measures announced? This is what you said. I'd be very, very surprised if they'd get that money to run Tobago as we would like them to have it. What was said in the THA budget, I feel that they, they should do it. I find the budget wasn't for, for the poor man on the ground. They're saying if 5.6 billion dollars is enough for Tobago and I say in Dino enough. And that's how we bring this week's edition of Let's Talk Tobago to a close. Remember you can send us your comments or queries on anything you've seen in this program to information at tha.gov.tt or visit us at www.tha.gov.tt. Like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Colleen Holder and on behalf of all of us at the Department of Information, have a safe and enjoyable week. And as we go, we leave you now with a final look at Papa Bee's Inn at Canby.